So John, uh, one of the big themes uh, in your presentation today was on the, the, the psychology um, uh, of attackers and how they try to exploit uh, the psychology of, of folks within an organization. So how do we start to change um, the, the psychology of security managers and, and uh, the employees uh, within organizations to address these very real uh, cyber physical threats? Yes, I mean, it's a great question. I think, um, you know, I, I think I, I tend to not want to make things really complex. I think that ultimately it comes down to a couple of things that we need to change. One is, um, you know, we mentioned rationalization, that we need to really be aware of when we're rationalizing what an attacker can do. And I, I kind of talk about that as the audacity of the attacker. You know, um, don't put the attacker in a box. Don't think that, hey, they, they would never do that or that would never happen or we could protect against it. If you do have measures in place to protect against it, then think about, well, what, what would happen if those measures fail? What can we do? So I think that from a psychological perspective, rational, not rationalizing is probably the biggest thing we need to kind of address in terms of arming not only our security teams with a proper mindset, but also uh, the people that we're trying to protect and making sure they understand that. And it goes back to some simple things. They see something, say something. A lot of people don't say something because they do see it, but they don't think it's really worth talking about. So I think it's, it is, truly just slightly changing people's mindset and, and that rational response theory we talked about, I think goes a long way to address that. And what can be done to create better uh, awareness and, and training around um, cybersecurity threats, especially, uh, you know, these very real and scary scenarios that, that you presented this morning. Um, you know, you've seen the, the reports like I have where the company will come in and do training, yet someone just hours later clicks on a something. You know, malicious link or something like that. So, so what, what can we do better? In this yeah, you know, I think the most effective way to do training, I mean, obviously you want to do the training classes and, and reminders, but I, I kind of, when we're talking to organizations, we say, hey, look, think about this as a marketing program. Many times we actually have HR drive the training um, or suggest they drive it. And by marketing program, I think you, you think about a campaign. Like we're gonna try to uh, reduce phishing attacks or we're gonna try to stop tailgating. Um, and so we're gonna spend the next three months really hammering people on that. And not just send them emails and put it in newsletters, but also put up posters. One of the most, as funny as this may sound, one of the most effective um, ways to change mindset is to put posters in the men's and ladies' rooms. Uh, because you go in there and you're suddenly reminded. And I always give people the, the, the example of hospitals. A few years ago, hospitals had, hospital-borne infections were a big deal. And the way they actually drove down the number of hospital-acquired infections was just through this concept of marketing to the employees to wash your hands, you know, uh, use gloves, use uh, protection. And I think it's the same thing in the cyber world. If we can think about how you're gonna market on a consistent basis, it eventually does change behavior. And John, you know, given the involvement of your firm in actually testing the, the, the vulnerability of, of different organizations, what's uh, holding back attackers from uh, you know, really carrying out some of these cyber physical attacks uh, that, that actually harm people, not just take money? Is it just the fact that we're lucky? Is it just because many of these folks are financially motivated? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We, we, for a long time, wondered why aren't we seeing more cyber terrorism? Um, we have seen cyber terrorism, but it's not in the, in the scope of, hey, physically causing damage or hurting people. Um, I think there's a lot of debate, especially in the intelligence community around and national security, why we haven't seen it. What we have seen is that profit motive. We'll see that ISIS carries out attacks or one of the other uh, terrorist groups. And when they do do that, um, what we find is they're using the proceeds of the attack to fund physical operations. So they will attack and they will, but it's more of a traditional cyber attack. And then the money they make on that, they put into their, their physical kind of day-to-day -day operations. And lastly, John, what do you believe are the, the greatest threats uh, on the horizon? Hmm. Uh, I think it's ultimately the sophistication level we're seeing in the attackers. You know, we're seeing stuff I didn't talk about in the presentation today, around polymorphic attacks, uh, the use of artificial intelligence to carry out attacks, highly distributed attacks. We're seeing a sophistication level because of the type and the education of the attacker and their maturity um, that is far outpacing. So you know, if you were to compare our defensive capability and the innovation there versus the innovation that we see attackers carrying out and, on, and is on the forefront of actually being able to employ, we see the attackers are much, much more innovative. 
um, than say the, the those of us that are in the defense world. And, and I think so. We're, we're probably will see much more um, a much more intelligent, sophisticated attackers is probably what we're going to be in for.